A Norman window was constructed by adjoining a semicircle to the top of an ordinary rectangular window, as we see pictured here. We want to find the dimensions of a Norman window of maximum area if the total perimeter is 16 feet. So to set this up, we're going to let the dimensions of the rectangle be L feet by W feet. So notice if this length is W, then the diameter of the circle would be W, and the radius would be one-half W. So we'll first set up the constraint from this problem, which is based upon the perimeter, which must be equal to 16 feet. Perimeter will be the distance around the window, or this distance here. So three sides will come from the rectangle, and this edge here will be half the circumference of a circle with diameter of W. So the perimeter must be equal to 2L plus W plus, again, half the circumference of a circle with diameter W. And since the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times diameter, we would have one-half pi times diameter, where the diameter is W. And this must be equal to 16 feet. This is our constraint. Now our goal here is to maximize the area, so now we'll set up the area equation for this window. The area would be equal to the area of the rectangle plus half the area of a circle with radius one-half W. So the area of the rectangle would be length times width, or LW, plus half the area of a circle with radius one-half, where the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. So we'll have half pi r squared, or half pi times r squared, where r is one-half w. Now to maximize the area, we want to find the derivative of the area equation, but before we do this, we need to write a in terms of one variable. Notice right now it's in terms of l and w. So what we'll do is solve the constraint for l, and then perform substitution for this l here. So to solve the constraint for L, notice how I'll have to subtract these two W terms to the right side of the equation, which would give us 2L equals 16 minus W minus one-half pi W. And now to solve for L, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by one-half. So we'll have L equals eight minus one-half W minus, this would be one-fourth pi W. And now we can substitute this for L into the area equation. So we'll have the area equals the quantity eight minus one-half W minus one-fourth pi W times W plus one-half squared is one-fourth, one-fourth times one-half would be one-eighth, so plus one-eighth pi w squared. So let's go ahead and take this equation to the next slide, simplify, and then find the first derivative to find the critical numbers of this function. So let's first clear the parentheses by distributing the w. So we'll have a equals eight w minus one-half w squared minus one-fourth pi w squared plus one-eighth pi w squared. So notice how these last two terms are like terms. This is equivalent to negative two-eighths pi w squared plus one-eighth pi w squared. So this simplifies to minus one-eighth pi w squared. Now to find the maximum value of a, we'll find the first derivative determine whether the derivative is undefined or equal to zero. So a prime, or the derivative of a with respect to w, is equal to eight. This would be minus w, and here we'd have minus two-eighths, or minus one-fourth, pi w. Well, this is never going to be undefined for any value of w, so now we'll set this equal to zero and solve for w to find our critical number.
Let's move the two w terms to the left side of the equation by adding them to both sides. So that would give us w plus one-fourth pi w equals eight. Now let's factor out the common factor of w. So we have w times the quantity one plus one-fourth pi equals eight. And now we'll divide both sides of the equation by the quantity one plus one-fourth pi to solve for w. So w is equal to this fraction here, or this quotient. But let's go ahead and clear the fraction from the denominator by multiplying the numerator denominator by four. So the critical number is w equals 32 divided by the quantity four plus pi. Now there's a couple ways to determine whether this value produces a maximum or minimum area. One way would be to graph the area function and analyze this. We should recognize this as a quadratic where the leading coefficient a would be negative and therefore it's a parabola opening down and therefore we would have a maximum value at this value of w which we can see from this graph here. The critical number is here producing a maximum area. But let's also use the second derivative test to determine whether we have a max or min. A double prime would be the derivative of the first derivative which would be zero minus one and then this would be minus one-fourth pi. Well this value is always less than zero which means the function is always concave down which we just saw from the graph. And if it's concave down we know we must have a maximum value at this critical number. So this is the width of the rectangle that will produce a maximum area for our Norman window. And this does come out to approximately 4.48, which would be feet. So now that we found W, we'll go back and find L, the length of the rectangle given by this equation here, and then we'll find the radius of the semicircle, which is equal to one-half W. So again, we already know W. Here's the exact value, and the approximate value is 4.48 four eight feet. And now we'll find the radius which is equal to half w or one half times thirty two over four plus pi. The exact value would be sixteen divided by four plus pi which is approximately two point two four feet. Which should make sense this is half of w which we found above. And now we'll find L using our formula here. So again, we'll substitute 32 over four plus pi for W. And because we're gonna combine these, I'm gonna write eight as eight over one. So we'd have eight over one and then minus this would be 16 over four plus pi. And this would be 32 divided by four is equal to eight. So we have minus eight pi over four plus pi. So to subtract these fractions, we have to have a common denominator, which would be four plus pi. So we'll multiply eight over one by four plus pi over four plus pi. Now that we have a common denominator, This would be 32 plus eight pi. And then minus 16 minus eight pi. The reason I wanted to show this is, notice how we have eight pi minus eight pi, that's zero. And 32 minus 16 is equal to 16. So L is equal to 16 divided by the quantity four plus pi which is actually the same as r, or half of w. This is gonna be approximately 2.24 feet, which is probably not an expected outcome. So let's go ahead and finish by labeling our Norman window, and then checking the perimeter to make sure it's 16 feet, and then determining the maximum area. So again, w is equal to approximately 4.48 feet, 
and half of W is approximately 2.24 feet. And we found that half of W was also equal to L, so L is also approximately 2.24 feet. And now to check this, let's make sure that the perimeter would be 16 feet, and let's also determine the maximum area. Well, here's the perimeter formula that we had as our constraint, which we knew had to be equal to 16. So if we substitute L and W into this equation, notice how even though we use the approximate values of L and W, the perimeter does come out to 16 feet. To determine our maximum area, again, here's the area formula from the first slide, we'll substitute L and W into this equation. Notice if we do this, again, we're using the approximate values, the maximum area is approximately 17.92 square feet which again, if we go back and take a look at the graph of the area function, once you wrote it in terms of W, here's the graph, and it does look like that the maximum area is just under 18 square feet. Okay, that's gonna do it. I hope you found this helpful.